Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight video on a Lancome fragrance, not a house that I dive into often on Channel Ram, but uh, this was actually sent to me in a set from um, a friend. I believe it was David. Um, and so I have to say thank you, David, for sending me this, uh, a actually a very generous array, a bunch of decants. I still haven't gotten through all of them, um, but without his generosity, a lot of this stuff I'd never be able to talk about on the channel. So thank you very much. And um, it's actually easy for me to remember which ones he sent because he's the only one who does his decants this way. So this one's called um, Lancone Hypnos Ohm. This is the Ohm version. There was also a original Hypnos, which was marketed towards women. Uh, and that was a huge hit for Lancome, apparently, from my understanding. So much so that years after it came out, they came back and decided to release Hypnos Ohm for men. This came out in 2007. Perfumer is the uh, very eccentric Maurice Roussel, who we all know and love. <clears throat> and um, the notes in Hypnos Ohm are cardamom, bergamot, mandarin orange, and mint in the top with lavender in the heart, and a base of amber, musk, and patchouli. So, um, first of all, a couple things. This spawned a few flankers, believe it or not. Um, so it did well enough to have a couple friends join the party in the Hypnos Ohm line. I've never smelled any of those flankers that this kicked off. Um, the other thing is that this was recently discontinued within the last year or so, give or take. So another discontinued gem fragrance review today. It just seems like more and more these houses are really starting to just ax the stuff that doesn't sell. Everything wants to be new. Everyone wants to buy the newest stuff. So they figured, screw it, we'll just ax all of this and just always put out new stuff, it seems like. Um, or maybe it's just my age is really starting to show. I don't know. But um, this, like I said, came out in 2007, which does not seem that long ago. Although this had a pretty decent run, you know, 15 years, give or take. Doesn't seem like the deep past, um, but it, but you know, it seems like yesterday to me. But um, so Hypnos Ohm, great name by the way, and a fantastic bottle. I don't have the bottle to show you, but um, if you pull up the bottle, it almost looks like uh, someone kind of took just a normal square bottle and twisted it. Uh, and um, so I, I like the um, sort of twisted look in the bottle. Uh, and so here's the thing. Um, Hypnos Ohm has something in it that is going to remind you more and more of this, of this designer style of perfumery. And that's why I say it's not uh, a type of fragrance that I talk about very often on the channel, but I will go everywhere. I'll talk about niche, I'll talk about artisanal, I'll talk about designers, I'll talk about cheapies. This was, I think, 20 to 40 bucks, 60 bucks max when it came out for the big boy bottle. Um, so, you know, this is considered one of the, I would say, more uh, budget end line of the fragrance. Um, but if you have smelled things, um, like for example, if you've smelled Rochas Man, which came out in the early 2000s, I think maybe even 2000, or if, if memory serves, somewhere around there, this also happens to be a Maurice Roussel creation. Um, and so you guys know how much I love making those connections. I've done a video on that whole connection series. There's definitely a connection between stuff like this with Hypnos Ohm, um, or even if you've smelled something like Lamal, which came out a couple years before, Rochas Man, this kind of style of fragrance. This is the sandbox that we're, that we're playing in, okay? Um, you could throw in this designer smell from things like Midnight in Paris. You know, this is the, this is where, this is where we're at with Hypnos Ohm, okay? Some people absolutely love that designer style of fragrances. It's their thing. You know, the easier to wear, more um, mass appealing fragrances are their thing. Others, it's not so much their thing. Uh, they don't like them, they hate them, whatever it is. Or maybe they've just kind of grown past them or moved past them in their fragrance journey, if you will. Now, I like going everywhere, even in places that I kind of feel like I have sort of moved past. Um, I really found it's a function of your journey. You know, it's a function of where you are in your journey. Nothing is stagnant. Everything changes. Um, that's why my biggest advice to newcomers in the hobby, do stuff like this. Get these little five mil decants if you can, you know, buy, buy, you can buy them for cheap sometimes from different sites, um, rather than full bottles, because, um, sometimes you'll get a bottle, you'll love it. And then a couple of years from now, as your taste change, you will not love that bottle anymore. So, um, you know, this, it's almost like, um, you know, a, a professional poker player like shaking his hand at the at the at the not at the rookie who plays a hand that has like a twenty percent odds of beating him. The professional has eighty percent odds of of winning, and and he loses that hand. 
uh, but he's just shaking his hand that the rookie kind of played that hand. You know, you learn, you pick up on things that the more you get into this hobby. So many hardcore frag heads, I would say, tend to move away from these designer-like fragrances. In one hand, I would put myself in that boat. On the other hand, I love doing these type of reviews for the channel. Um, like I said, it would be impossible to do without the generosity of the community. So again, thank you, David, for, for sending this my way. Um, plus he sent along some amazing cigars with them and I, and I really enjoyed those cigars that he sent. So let's talk about the smell. So when you first spray this fragrance, you're hit with this designer like blob. It's the best way I can describe it. I've, I've used the term luxury blob in the past to describe things like the Rojas and stuff like that. Um, and that's a term that was, uh, coined by our friend, uh, the scented devil, but you get some of the sweetness that is very prevalent in so many designer fragrances, even on the masculine side of things. Um, it's become more and more prevalent since this came out in 2007. So more on the sweetness level later on in, in the, in the review, but, uh, what you basically get is this, um, you do get a little bit of the citruses, you get a little bit of the mandarin orange, which, which sort of, you know, adds a little bit of, um, freshness along with the bergamot. You get a little bit of the mint and a little bit of cardamom and I'm, and I'm sort of, um, specifying a little bit because what really starts to come forward to me, to my nose, is what I'm calling in this review an overgrown lavender, okay? So just imagine a field of like giant lavender that's being tended by and cared for by like Monsanto or something, okay? Um, this sort of giant lavender fields, and I'm reminded of the joke um, of, by KFC where their chickens have like 18 legs, you know, again, it's a, it's a joke. I know it's not true. Don't sue me, KFC. I'm not saying it's the truth. Uh, I'm just saying there's an old joke out there that KF, that KFC used to grow these, you know, lab-grown chickens with like 18 legs. That's kind of the feeling of this. It has, the lavender in this has this like mutant quality to it. You know what I mean? Um, it um, is a little bit herbal, a little bit floral, and I would almost say a little bit verdant. There's some green touches in here. It's like the mint and small green floral touches of the lavender start to come through. To be honest, for a $20 to $40 fragrance, the level of the lavender is kind of where I expected, if not maybe even a little bit higher. It doesn't seem too cheap, laundry detergent-esque, you know, it doesn't have any of that. Uh, but keep in mind, if you've been sniffing the amouages and rojas and all that stuff of the world, um, the lavender here may come across as a little bit fake. It's almost like how my taste buds feel the one time a year I allow myself to eat a McDonald's hamburger. You know, it's like, eh, it's not going to kill me. But what am I really eating here? Like, how processed is this hamburger, you know, um, is kind of what scares me. So that's why I say there's this, like, mutant lavender feel to this. But if you have smelled other designer fragrances from Maurice Roussel, like I mentioned, Rochas Man specifically, um, Rochas Man literally feels like he took the formula for some or for something like Hypnos Ohm, uh, and, or I should say it the other way around, Hypnos Ohm feels like he took the formula for Rochas Man and removed some of those gourmand notes like the raspberry and coffee and stuff like that and added some of the spices and some other things that make this just a little bit more, a little less gourmand, let's call it, okay? But that very popular style of fragrance seems to be recycled over and over again. Um, his niche creations like Musk Ravageur, Dante Bra, all that stuff are on a whole nother level as far as like quality and the way the notes are presented and the way I would say the notes come to your nose um, compared to his designer creations. His designer creations seem to have this repetitiveness to them. So that is one part of the fragrance. The other part is this. Oh, and really quick, before we move on from the lavender, I do have to mention that the lavender is probably the most, maybe not prominent, but you notice it throughout the life of the, of the perfume because I would say the most prominent part is this oriental aura, you know, this amberiness, this sweetened amber thing, which we'll get to. Um, but I will say that the lavender is noticeable throughout the entire arc of the fragrance, and it doesn't change much. It's kind of like what you get in the beginning with the lavender is what you're going to get at the very end. Um, so it's very, very linear in that front. So the other part is this. It has bits and pieces of other very popular fragrances. And I know I mentioned others from Maurice Roussel in particular, but also if you think about things like Lamal, which I showed earlier, um, Lamal, if you look at the note listing, there's another connector there because this actually has mint in the top as well. This has mint, this has uh, lavender, and it has this base of um, sweetness combo. So 
The only problem for me is that this came out in the mid 90s, you know? Um, and so what they've done with Ibnos Ohm in an attempt to kind of separate itself a little bit from Lamal, they've added some spices on top. Now, they used cardamom, which to be honest, um, I don't know if I would be able to just put my finger on it and say, okay, that is cardamom. It doesn't have that, you know, specific cardamom scent that's going to make it stand out like some of the Middle Eastern fragrances I've been reviewing recently from Amouage and stuff like that, uh, where they have big overdoses of cardamom. The cardamom in here, um, as I said, it is a little bit subtle, but there is a spiciness that you will pick up on. Um, everything in a lot of these designer fragrances is very hazy, you know? The lines are not as sharp. It's it's harder to sort of put your finger on something and say, ah, that's what that is. It's It seems to just be kind of mucked together, you know? Um, but but the sweetness combination will definitely remind you of Lamal um, turned down a little bit. So they've toned the sweetness down a little bit. They wanted to make it a little bit more professional is kind of what it seems like to me in an attempt to kind of separate itself from Lamal. But again, they run, they run into a problem. Lamal came out in the mid-90s. In the late 90s, Ascada put out Casual Friday. And um, Casual Friday, to me, has always felt like a more professional version of Lamal. And I actually prefer Casual Friday to even Hypnos Hip Ohm um, by, by Lancome. And Casual Friday uses things like anise and tarragon, and they've used some other spices as well to kind of give it that spicy top with the Lamal like kind of base with the sweetness toned down. So, and we're talking late 90s. We have mid 90s, late 90s, and now we're all the way to 2007. Um, and Lancome puts this out. And it feels a little bit to me like a perfume out of time, you know? Like um, this would have been much more in its in its bubble in, in 1997 instead of 2007. That's just my opinion, um, looking at fragrance history, if you will. It's almost like taking the safe road, where Lancome kind of knew they were capped on the upside, but they were also capped on the downside. They knew they would probably sell a certain amount of bottles. And, and like I said, um, even though this wasn't a monster seller, it wasn't a monster hype beast or anything like that, um, they knew they had Maurice Roussel's winning formula, which sold over and over and over again. Um, it worked well enough to stick around for other brands, and, and um, some of the stuff that I showed is still in... in um, in production, like Rochus Man, I believe, is still in production. Casual Friday is unfortunately also discontinued. Um, and so they knew they were they were not going to have a monster seller, but they knew that it would stick around for a while. And like I said, it stuck around long enough to even have a couple flankers. So it did well enough to have a couple flankers. It hung on for something like 15 years until it just recently got the axe about a year ago or so. So this is officially a discontinued gem fragrance review. So Let's talk about the elephant in the room a little bit. Let's talk about the sweetness here. So here's the thing. Even though the sweetness is turned down for me a little bit, um, I still feel like these designer scents, the notes just kind of merge into something that to my nose just perceives as, as sweet. Now that level of sweetness is where people may have some arguments, um, but anything above, let's say this line is considered sweet and it's definitely above that line for me anyways. So for example, when you start to mention things like, okay, in the base you have tonka bean, traditionally tonka bean, you get that very nutty, earthy side of it. Um, I don't get that much, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get this traditional high quality tonka, which I have some actual tonka bean, thanks to Russian Adam, um, that I've kind of had a chance to play with and talk, I talked about it in my, um, ingredient video that I did from, from the 50 ingredients that Russian Adam sent me. You may get this almost like strange, like maybe like almondy quality you know like there's this <sighs> have you ever been to a wedding and they've given you those candied almonds right um i think they're called jordan almonds or something like that but have you ever had those candied almonds with the you know hard coated candy sort of outer shell around them i love those things by the way um, but that's kind of how the tonka comes across is here in, in here it is it is very um very designer. I don't know how else to describe it other than very, very designer. Um, you know, you're not going to get the nutty, earthy side of things that you're going to get from a higher quality type fragrance. Um, instead, you get the design, you get more of this designer sweetened ambery side, which is not a shock or it shouldn't be a shock if you, you know, if you know some of Maurice Roussel's other hits in the way that he creates these. Tonka is just kind of one part of it. 
Um, if you've smelled things like New Harlem, or if you smelled again, going back to Rochas Man, Rochas Man is kind of the more budget version of New Harlem, if you will. Um, and Rochas Man has a little bit of that syrupy sweetness to it. You know, ha New Harlem has even more, from my understanding. It has more, I think I have a sample floating around somewhere, but it has even more of this um, sort of syrup on top of the pancakes type feeling. Um, and if you can just imagine a world where the syrup that you're putting on top of these pancakes is somehow sweet, but not too sweet, you'll get in, in the ballpark, okay? Um, but it will definitely come across as very modern for a man who loves fragrances, let's say from the 70s and 80s. If you're a vintage style guy, you know, if you're going to wear um, Monsieur Rochas or something like that, uh, this is going to come across as very modern. Even though Maurice Roussel in an interview said this is a combination of modern and vintage, uh, I don't know if I agree with that personally. Uh, to me, as a vintage lover, this is modern through and through. That's That's my opinion. Now, just having the lavender does not make it a fougere. Lancome has called this on record an oriental fougere from my understanding, um, which, you know, just so you guys know, just having lavender in a fragrance does not make a fragrance a fougere, ladies and gentlemen. I, I hate to bust your bubble there, um, but the oriental, almost syrup-like feeling, um, just imagine you put your syrup on your pancakes and then you add a little bit of spices on top. So you put a little bit of nutmeg, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, uh, and it's winter, it's cold outside. That should come, that or that ambery sort of aura should come to mind. That's kind of what I smell. Um, so the fragrance, according to the brand, is all about contrast. Um, according to the marketing, Mar Maurice Roussel is quoted to have said that this is like water in the top and fire in the base, which is, um, again, another one where I'm like, really? Uh, but keep in mind, he's being more, um, he's, he's being, um, he's not being specific. All right, let's put it that way. He doesn't mean actual, he doesn't mean this is a watery, calone, aquatic fragrance. Don't take, don't take his words, you know, to heart. Um, don't run away just yet if you hate calone, by the way. But he means that the bergamot and mints are supposed to freshen things up a little bit before you get to that heavier, ambery, more fiery base. So to be honest... I have to say, just like I don't get very much cardamom, but maybe like a hazy spice, I don't get much mint, um, but maybe just like a little bit of a hazy freshness. It's These these designer reviews are actually much harder to do, believe it or not, because I just want to be like, it's designer smelling and it's sweet. You know, I mean, what else do you want me to tell you? Um, but obviously... Um, dousing a fire with just a little bit of water on top is not going to put it out normally unless it's a very, very small fire. Um, and, and so the oriental or the fiery notes, according to Maurice Roussel, definitely do dominate. Now, like I said, where I'm at in my collecting game, I would rather wear Casual Friday for this style. All right, so since I have it in my collection already, would I go for Hypnos Ohm by Lancome? No, no, I would not. You know, I, I could see this as maybe like a office or maybe even like a clubbing fragrance for a younger guy this this still very well may may work um especially if you can still pick it up for 20 40 60 bucks um now that it's discontinued if it's going for double or triple that i don't think it's worth it in my opinion um you know this 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 is a pass for me for where i'm at in my fragrance journey i'm glad i got to even experience it thanks to and you can see i put a pretty good i've worn this multiple times um which every time I wore it, I'm like, uh, I got to wear this again. But what's funny is I was going, uh, and then every time I'd wear it, I would get strangely, excuse me, strangely positive feedback from the people around me. Um, multiple times people in my life, um, gave me, let's say a positive word or two. I won't call it a compliment. Although actually one, one or two were actual, actual compliments, um, but let's just say the people in my life, whether my workmates or, you know, other people who are in my orbit of, of folks like this a lot. They like this. They said good things about it. And I was like, oh, God, of course, of course, this is the one you're going to compliment. But that this is the kind this sweeter masculine, the more modern masculine style is what gets compliments nowadays. That's just the way it is. You're not going to get away from it. For someone like me who doesn't like sweet fragrances, I kind of roll my eyes at it because like today, my sense of the day is Oud Taiwan. And, and this is for me, the eye rolling. 
I'm like, oh god, yes, I love, I, this is one of my favorite Ariz Ladore releases ever. I love Ud Taiwan, I'd love a full bottle one day. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I want to wear. I'm forcing myself to wear this for, for the channel, basically. Um, but, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, if, if you're watching this channel, you're probably a lot like me, unless you just stumbled on this review and you have no idea who I am, you know? Um, and you're, or most of my regular viewers probably feel the same way as me. They're not wearing the fragrance for compliments or anything like that. Um, but on the other hand, as a collector of discontinued fragrances, if I could get a bottle of this for 20 bucks or something, it may not be the worst thing in the world to have in the collection and do my once a year wear, just like I do my once a year McDonald's, uh, you know, hamburger. But, um, I will say, I do wish this was a little more semi-sweet instead of sweet, even though it's less sweet than something like Lamal, which I can't stand. I, I really can't stand this. Um, Hypnos Ohm, I can stand. I, it's not like I hated, I hated myself every second while I wore it. Um, but, you know, I'm just at the point now where, let, let me put it to you this way. I would buy, if I was going to buy this, I would buy it more for the collection, more for the I, I like collecting discontinued fragrances kind of thing. More to say I have it and it's discontinued, then I'm excited to wear it, if that makes sense. I hope that's a, I hope that those two things kind of make sense in your mind. That's how I would look at picking this fragrance up, because would I be excited to wear this as my scent of the day nowadays? No, I want to wear stuff like this, you know? So that's kind of where we're at. Um, okay, real quick, since um, I've been putting this off forever, I'm going to open this damn box that has been sitting on my desk for weeks. Um, this was sent to me by a friend in Canada, and I think that there's a Guerlain in here that... A newer Guerlain that I've been wanting to talk about. So just real quick, let me open this damn package at the end of the video here. And we will see what's in here. Oh, wow. There's more than just one, I'll tell you that. Um... All right, let's see what we have. I have been putting this off for a long, this, this package has been staring at me for way too long. Okay, let's see what she sent me. Okay, so this is what I expected. This is Paris Patchouli by Guerlain. That's the one I was, I was expecting. Um, so that's awesome. That I, I love, and I love patchouli fragrances. And then um, this is called La Perla, I believe. Um, La Perla, which is, sounds really familiar. I wonder if I have heard of this before. La Perla. Um, La Perla, 1987, I wonder. Is it the same one? I don't know. I think it, I think it is. Um, discontinued from La Perla. La Perla is the brand and La Perla is the fragrance. Um, so that is interesting. It's a mini. An 8 mil mini that I can't get out. Um, okay, cool. How about that? Beautiful packaging. I love the packaging from back in the day. So this is a floral sheeper. Oh, wow. I can smell it through the... Uh, the bottle design is, of course, the great Pierre Denand, who I did a bottle video on. And I'm going to do one on his counterpart one of these days, too. But uh, Pierre Wargnai is the perfumer. Oh, shit. One of my all-time favorites. Um, okay. I'm, I'm officially excited. I'm actually more excited about this than I am about the, the new Guerlain. Um, cause I heard it was just like a regular kind of patchouli thing, but this, this is, this has given me, I mean, this, this has given me vibes of something I would, I would definitely love a hardcore spicy oriental style Shepra, um, floral honey, a lot, a lot of honey too. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm really gonna, I'm going to dig into this soon, hopefully, but I have like a thousand fragrances that I've been saying that on. So. But thank you very much for your uh, generosity. You know who you are. I don't know if you wanted to be shout out on the channel or not, so you're going to remain anonymous. But anyways, if you have experience with either the Guerlain um, Paris Patchouli or this La Perla, um, do let me know. Let me know what you think of Hypnos Om by Lancome. Sadly, discontinued will be on the discontinued gem list. 
Um, so yes, more reviews to come, as always. I appreciate you guys bearing with me in this time of, let's say, sporadic uploads. I'm going to try to do... I'm still going to try to do a video a day, although I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be more like a video every other or every third day now, um, just based on my schedule. It's just the way it is, based on everything that's going on in my life. Hopefully that calms down very soon, though. But as always, I love you guys. Thank you for being here with me. Cheers, and catch you next time. Bye-bye.